Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Professor David Tizard. Welcome to lecture number four in this course on advanced writing. I hope that you're enjoying it so far. Uh, last week was a little bit different as I asked you to write some poetry. I thought that was really quite cool because it made you think about words and structure and emotion. And I really enjoyed reading through some of your poetry. So thank you for doing that. At the end of this lecture, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this week's assignment and the first assignment. Um, we might have to change things a little bit because it seems that we're online this semester. So that's fine. We'll, we'll work things out. Uh, but I'll, I'll give you some information about that at the end of this lecture. So pay attention there. This week, we're going to look at a female voice in writing. Her name is Annie Lennox, very famous singer. Uh, I grew up hearing her music on the radio, on the television, in the car, her work with Eurythmics and her solo work as well. Very, very popular and well-respected singer, specifically because she seemed to be an artist. She seemed to be an individual. She wasn't so much a a pop star or an idol as we might know them in South Korea but she was a genuine uh, a genuine artist somebody genuinely looking for expression and while her main avenue of expression was music and lyrics we're going to have a look at some of her writing today and I also think it's important because we also need to hear some female voices. Of course, George Orwell is a fantastic writer and anybody can learn from George Orwell. But I also think it's important to try to give you some female voices. I'm not sure maybe whether you'll be able to tell the difference between them or not. Nevertheless, that's part of, uh, part of the aim in this as well. So we look at the writing of Annie Lennox. She asks the question, and let's let's have a look at the work first and we'll come back to this she asked the question what is music so i just referenced george orwell and he started with a question starting with a question to explore is a good thing and i just want to tell you about starting with a question when you start your writing with a question Try to make sure that you don't already know the answer. Now, this is very difficult, but this is what will make you develop not only as a writer, but also as a person and a thinker, because there are many things that you do not know the answer to. There are many things that you might be confused or, sorry, puzzled about. Excuse me while I uh, put my phone on this silent mode here. There are many things that you might be confused or puzzled about. And that's what you should be writing about. If you know the answer. So if you say the question is, who is, who is uh, Bong Joon-ho? If you already know a lot about Bong Joon-ho, when you write that article, Who is Bong Joon-ho, you're not going to learn anything. You, the reader might, the reader might learn something. But you as a writer, as a thinker, you're not really going to learn much. Now, we have this habit when we write or when we present, we want to try and demonstrate our knowledge. We want to show how clever we are. Look at all the things. You go, Pablo, say, on that normal doctor here. We want to try to show all this stuff that we know. That's great. And that's why when we choose topics, we think about topics that we know a lot about. However, my suggestion here, and this seems like a paradox for your topic, is choose something you're curious about. Choose something that you're curious about. 
That doesn't mean you know a lot about it. 그냥 뭐 관심이 있어요. 어? 아니면 궁금해요. You have interest in it or you're curious about it, but you don't know a lot about. And that that means that you have a question. Well, what is this thing? Who is this person? Why does this happen in society? Why now is this happening? I don't know. Then I should write about it. This is what I'm trying to explain to you. Normally, you want to write about things that you know a lot about. I'm suggesting that you write about things you don't know a lot about. Because if you do that, when you write, the writing will, excuse me, the writing will be a discovery. It will be an adventure. And at the end of the writing, because you don't know the destination, you don't know where you're going to arrive or dotak, huh? you don't know where that is, then it's alive and anything is possible. And that's a good thing. Also, when you finish your writing, you will have changed as a person. Your thoughts will be different because you've been thinking about new things and you've been thinking about different topics that you didn't comprehend, think about, contemplate or understand before. So, I'll just finish here on that point. When you're starting with a question, when you're finding a topic choose something that you don't know the answer to i don't know the answer to that that's a good topic that's a good question okay annie lennox starts with <clears throat> excuse me this question what is music you all know what music is right? we all know what music is but if you had to describe music, so there's this thing called the alien test. Now, um, I first heard about this from Chomsky, Noam Chomsky, uh, but I think it, it's basically the same as what Plato and many other thinkers do. So the alien test about defining concepts. You know what music is, of course. You like music? Yeah, I like music. But we never explain music. Now, the alien test is, imagine an alien came down from space. Like, Drum. there's the alien. And the alien says to you, hi. All right, Mr. Alien. And the alien says, what are you going to do later? What are you going to do later? And you tell the alien, I'm going to listen to music. The alien says, what's music? Hmm. Hmm then all of a sudden you have this problem. Well, how do I explain music to someone who doesn't know what music is? And so if you played them um, a, a K-pop song, you played them a black pink song, and they would think, oh, so music always sounds like that. And then if they heard Beethoven or Vivaldi or Tchaikovsky, they would say, well, that's not music because they sound completely different. But they're both music. So you need to change your definition of music. Do you see where I'm going with this? There are many things that you understand and know about, but you've never tried to explain. And therefore, a really good topic of writing, if you don't know what to write about, a good thing to be writing is what is, mm, and it can be a myongsa. Okay, so if you have what is music, well, that's difficult in the alien test. What is art? You, if your major is design or something like that, what is design? What is Japanese literature? What is BTS or anything? And then you can explain these concepts. Now, some of these are uh, tangible. What is BTS? There, there's something that you can see. It could be what is love. It's quite a difficult one. What is love? It's also a very famous song. What is honor? What is pride? What is jealousy? What is being a girl in South Korea 2020? It's quite an interesting thing, isn't it? 
perhaps. So, starting with a question, perhaps do the alien test on a series of concepts you don't know what they are, or you know about them but you've never had to solmyong or explain them to someone. That's great, great topic, and it produces good writing. Annie Lennox chooses music, and she starts like this: What is music? Music is pure magic. It is a wonderful gift to humanity. Music moves us and soothes us. It stimulates. It makes us want to dance or sing. It makes us feel happy or sad, inspired or uplifted. It affects our mood in all kinds of infinite ways. It can be exquisitely subtle or wildly raucous, from a lullaby to a war cry for revolution. It's almost like a poem that we did last week, isn't it? That's the introduction to her work. Now, what is she doing here? What is Annie Lennox doing with this? Yes, yeah, she's just describing music, right? So, can we use this? Can we adopt this? If we break down what she's doing, and we don't have to use this as an introduction, we could use this anywhere in our work. What is she doing in this? Well, she's talking about music. She asks a question, and then she answers a question. Now, in this, the subject. This is really important. Subject. What's the subject? Subject is jewel, I think. Right. The subject is always the same. Music. It. Music. It. 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 Okay. So we we start. We have music written clearly. And then we go to it, and then we have music again. And then we go to it. So there's a bit of a pattern, right? There is a pattern, establishing a pattern in writing that should be familiar to you. And then what do you do once you've established a pattern? Once you have established a pattern, then you break the pattern because we're not robots and we don't work in patterns. We need to be shocked. So A B A B B B B B one more time. Because it would be boring if it said music all the time. You've got to say it once or twice. You could say it three times. But if it was just music is music is music is music is music is, that would be terrible. And so there's a little play between these two things, okay? Between the subject, using the word, and then kind of like a pronoun for it, using this it. So the subject is the same. The other thing is, let's have a look at this. Music. Is it is pure magic? So this is like music is music is mo hyung yung sa adjective. It is a wonderful gift to hum humanity. So it's a wonderful gift. So it's like a myung sa a noun. But we've still got this describing thing. Music is this. Music is this. So one and two. It's music is. It is. Hmm. So something stays the same. The is stays the same, and it uses Hyung Yong Sa's wonderful and pure adjectives. But the subject, music, and it kind of changes, right? Now here, if we look at number three and、uh, four, music moves us and soothes us. So here we've got the verb. We're not doing music is anymore. Now we're doing music does something. Music verbs. Music does something, and you'll notice here that in this sentence, it's music does this and does this. This is just one thing. Music is one thing, pure magic. It is one thing, a wonderful gift. Music does this and this. So the sentence style or the sentence length has changed. Right? It's not just doing the same thing every time. Can you see that here? We've got a comma. Music does A and B. Here, can you? It stimulates. And that's short, so it goes. We still got the verb, but this time we just have one verb, and it's intransitive. It doesn't have music does. Dung dung dung. Music moves us. Music soothes us. It stimulates. So again, it's a verb, but it's different. It makes us want to dance or sing. That's good because we've had and now we have or.、It、makes us want to dance or sing. It makes us feel happy or sad, inspired or uplifted. 
dance or sing, happy or sad, inspired or uplifted. One, two, three. It makes us want to dance or sing, it makes us feel happy or sad. Ah, uh, let's just do one more. And that one seems quicker because it doesn't have, it makes us feel. Just put it there. It affects our mood in all kind of infinite ways. It can be exquisitely subtle or wildly raucous. From a lullaby to a war cry for revolution. Here you see the use of the colon. Looks very difficult, but let's see if we can try to make you write something like this. So, music is this, it is this. Music does this, it does this. Music makes us mm or mm. Music, ma music makes us etc. So, we have this situation. If we are skillful and we just take that basic template, then we would get music is fun. I'm, I'm not going to do it particularly artistically. I'll do it simply, very simple, so you can understand what I'm doing. Music is, uh, music is love. It is everything in my life. It'd be better if we can see the bits that we put in. Music moves us and smooths us. Yeah, that was the uh, the second part. Music moves us and soothes us. Uh, music mm, pleases us and saddens us. And then we had this kind of intransitive one. It breathes. It's kind of poetic. I'm not sure that it makes much sense, but music makes us A or B. Music, music makes us laugh or cry. It's pretty simple. Right. And then we had it makes us feel one, two, or three. It makes us feel it makes us want to dance or sing. It makes us feel happy or sad, inspired or uplifted. Okay, so we can probably copy that. Music makes us laugh or cry. Uh, music makes us feel like dancing or like dancing and an opposite of dancing, like dancing or hiding. It makes us makes us feel like singing or sobbing and then the comma it makes us feel like singing or sobbing hugging or kissing I know. summary it affects our mood in all kind of infinite ways Basically, it does lots of things. Music can be the this or this can be the first thing you listen to when you wake up, or the last thing you listen to before you go to bed. An alarm clock or a pumping night club in Hong there. So there we go. We, we've used the style and if we sort of put it like this now and we take away that we we've taken Annie Lennox's form. We've broken it down. We've looked at her use of verbs and adjectives and and the speed and the sentence length and this is definitely not better than hers because I've tried to do it very simplistically just so you can understand it without getting too much into any sort of deep evocative linguistic tricks but it would sound like this music is love it is everything in my life uh, that doesn't work it, uh, it should be an hour lives that would be better music is love it is everything in our lives music pleases us and saddens us it breathes 
Music makes us laugh or cry. Music makes us feel like dancing or hiding. It makes us feel like singing or sobbing, hugging or kissing. Basically, it does lots of things. Music can be the first thing you listen to when you wake up or the last thing you listen to before you go to bed. An alarm clock or a pumping nightclub in a home day. It's quite a, a reasonable way to start an introduction or to use anywhere in your writing. It could be a conclusion. It could be in the middle of your work. Now, that's about music. But it doesn't have to be about music. As long as you understand that style and what she's doing, then you can use it for your own and you can change it and you can break her rules. So last semester I wrote these examples in class. They might not be the best. They were just, again, written spontaneously. So uh, it is a joy in our lives. It energizes. It can be cheap gimbap or high class steak. Food comforts us. Food is a gift. Food makes us go outside or stay at home. Food makes us happy or sad, full or empty. Food does many things to humans. Food can be necessary or luxurious. So why do people always try to... And then you can continue with your article. Now, there's something about this one, this food example, that is different from Annie Lennox's one or this one. What is the difference? Can you find the difference for me in this one? The difference is that uh, this doesn't work. I've got my stylus down here. Sorry. The difference is this. Let's do it this way. It doesn't start with the specific noun, so it builds up an uh, it builds up a surprise. It builds up an element of you don't know what's going to happen. So it is this, and it can be this, and it does this. And you're like, well, what is it? So it becomes like a puzzle. It becomes like a riddle. And then finally you tell them what it is. Well, it's food. So this is about where and how you use that food or it, that music or it. Annie Lennox is it started music, it, music, it, right? But it doesn't have to do that. You could start it, 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 and then it creates this. It's a puzzle. It's like Sherlock. You're trying to work out what it does. So that's one thing also that you can consider. Um, I did it about a person. Obviously, last semester, uh, Toguk was in the news basically every day. That's why if we were doing it now, it would be about COVID-19. But... Uh, you could do it about a person, just to show you. Uh, Toguk is the new Minister of Justice. He fills the pages every day. He is sometimes a hero and sometimes a villain. He is a man. He makes us protest, he makes us celebrate. He causes arguments, raises hopes, destroys lives and produces shaved conservative heads. Toguk can be many things to the people of Korea. He can be the future, or he can be a repetition of the past. Now, if you were writing an article about Cholgul, that's a pretty good because at the very beginning of the article, you're saying that Cholgul can be everything. He's a good guy or he's a bad guy. He saves lives or he destroys lives. It depends whether you're Osu Dang or Jimbo Dang. That, let's not get into politics too much. But do you understand that people's, perspe people's perceptions and people's understanding of that person are very broad? And in that introduction, we're saying all of that there. And we're just using that technique from Annie Lennox. We're looking at that introductory paragraph, how she's put that, and we've used it ourselves. We haven't copied it completely now. Now we're getting really far away. If you notice, we end on... Um, because here we're using semicolons. He makes us protest, semicolon. He makes us celebrate. That's different. He causes arguments, raises hopes, destroys lives, and produces shaved conservative heads. That's one, two, three, and four. Getting the speed up there. I'm not saying it's better or good, but I'm saying it's different. And he can be many things to the people of Korea. He can be this, or he can be this. It's a nice conclusion. So, once you get the basic pattern, then you can start investigating it. 
there's one more that I wrote. This one is a little bit more evocative, I guess. Let me look at this one. Um, sorry, while I try to move this down. She is a woman that fights for equality. She fights for us. She is brave, courageous. She is everything that young girls want to be. She writes on social media and she writes to her friends. She shares her stories, her dreams, her hopes and her fears. She lives, she breathes. She is me. I am she. I am the one writing. I am telling my story. What do you think of that one? That one is quite interesting. And I, I shouldn't talk about my own writing like this, but I'm trying to give you examples of how easy it can be. Why is this one interesting and how is it different? What's the answer? Why is this one different? What does it do? The thing that it does is it's like that puzzle again, or it has a twist, right? So, you know, when you're watching a movie and at the end you read, oh, he's dead. Oh, that's that. Ah, It's that twist at the end. So you're reading this and you're going, she is a woman and she does this and she does all these things. You're like, okay, okay. There's some superhero. This is some uh, celebrity. This is some yonin. Uh, and then she is me. Oh, I am she. Oh, it twists. It changes. How does it do that? What, you know, how do you create a twist using this technique? You should know the answer. You use the subject or you use the pronouns between she and I. Or music and it. So it's an extension of this food idea. It, it, it. And then we go to food. So it's, it's like that, but this one is more effective. We continue this she, she is me, I am she, I am the one writing, I'm telling my story. So you can set up, you can begin introductions using things like this. They can be very effective because your opening paragraph is the first thing that people read. And if your opening paragraph is weak, then people are going to be bored. The opening paragraph is so important. I wrote an article today in the newspaper. And originally, my opening paragraph um, was just a, a paragraph. And then halfway down, I wrote something. And I thought, well, that's a good paragraph. That's quite interesting. And so I got that paragraph from the middle of my article and I just put it at the top and I thought, that's better. It's hard to write an opening paragraph. You can do, but what you might find is you can write opening paragraphs. Another way is you just write and you might find that that bit in the middle, or well, actually, that should be at the top. Because when you're writing, then you're getting into the flow, you're getting into the zone. Sometimes it takes a while. You don't just start writing straight away. Take some time to get some ideas and then after two, three minutes, four minutes, then your writing is coming alive and that's what you can use. So I do that, I did that today. I looked in the middle of my thing and I said, that's a good article. Sorry, I didn't say that. I said, that's a good paragraph. Put that at the top because your writing has to have a good introduction so look at your work and think is my introduction good would any of these other paragraphs be a better introduction and think about that we've spent a little bit of time on the opening <laughs> opening paragraph so i hope that makes sense to you what we've done let's read through the rest of this and some of the language is going to be very hard for you. That doesn't matter. But what I want you to focus on is the structure. So it's what is music? Now, what is this paragraph? What is the purpose? What is this paragraph? What is the purpose? Etc. Let's do that first and then I'll break down some of the ideas. So we'll go from the beginning to the end. Let's see how it sounds as a piece of writing. What is music? Music is pure magic. It is a wonderful gift to humanity. Music moves us and soothes us. It stimulates. It makes us want to dance or sing. 
It makes us feel happy or sad, inspired or uplifted. It affects our mood in all kinds of infinite ways. It can be exquisitely subtle or wildly raucous, from a lullaby to a war cry for revolution. When Satish Kumar asked me to guest edit the special music for Transformation feature in this issue of Resurgence, I was delighted, as it gave me the opportunity to reflect once again on that most profound question, what actually is music? Music is different things to different people. To Ian Skelly, author of the article Beauty Speaks, above all things, music has a transcendental significance that is captured in the beautiful patterns of nature and architecture, a kind of frozen music. To Mark Kiddel, author of Conversations and Crossroads, music can bridge cultures in a universal conversation that is beyond intellect or reason, but which is heartfelt. To Brian Eno, music brings the joy of unexpected and beautiful sound. And to singer-songwriters like myself and Howard Milner, music, and singing in particular, takes us to a world apart, a world beyond self and ego, a place of emotion that touches the soul. I present to you an insightful glimpse into the world of music, Yet it seems to me that the question, what is music, has no ultimately fixed answer, because although music can be defined in mechanistic terms as merely vibrations that are detected by the organ of corti and assimilated by the brain's cortex into what we hear, that is still only half the story. It is no accident that the Latin word for breath, the prerequisite of music, is spiritus, for music involves the spiritual in us. It is of the spirit and so is universal, otherworldly, nebulous and freely evolving. What a wonderful gift to humanity. Ever since I can remember, music has been an accompaniment to my life. It would be impossible for me to even try and conceptualise a world without music. If you have the natural aptitude for an appreciation for it, then music simply draws you to it and connects. Watch a baby nodding her head, clapping her hands, or bouncing in response to a rhythm or melody. Songs, in particular, contain something profoundly elemental. The singer actually becomes the instrument or vehicle of communication expression. Through the combination of voice, lyrical content and poetic structure, melody, rhythm, the nuance of combined tonal qualities and phrasing within the breath, singers can transmit and translate thoughts and feelings potentially elevating and transporting both the singer and the listener to another realm. Music really can lead us into another dimension. Music also tells stories, breaks hearts, reduces us to tears or seduces us into falling in love over and over again. Music is a universal language, a human creation from a divine source, perhaps. Music is a mystery, a code, a vehicle of spirit and soul. It is perceived through hearing the vibration of sound, the most sublime resonance from the eardrum to the brain. Music moves us beyond intellect to the heart centre. I'm not a music expert. I'm a music lover, a discoverer, an explorer. Music for me is pure potentiality. I can engage with it. I can commune with it. Sometimes, if I'm open to it, it takes me by surprise and I step out of myself. Music is a friend, a companion, a guide and a teacher. A challenge, a landscape, a palette, a texture, a shape. Music is chord structure, harmony or dissonance. Music is culture from every origin. It is identity and belonging. It is history and invention. Music is remembering and forgetting. Music is symmetry, symmetry rebellion, genius, prodigy. Mastery, virtuoso, dazzling, breathtaking, spellbinding, and extraordinary. Pause for a minute to think of these sounds. Harp, clarinet, kettle drum, xylophone, violin, guitar, trumpet, saxophone, sitar, oboe, flute. They are all uniquely different, yet we can hear them in our heads just by thinking of them. Then think of the individual styles of various composers, Bach or Debussy, for example. We can tell the difference between Vivaldi, Coprin and Telemann, and they too have unique sounds. But what drew them to compose? How could Mozart play with such brilliance at the age of four? What made Miles Davis tick? These are the deeper questions that remain unanswered. There are other questions that need to be asked. What does the wind sound like, or a dripping tap? Can this be a form of music too? A car door slamming, a baby crying, footsteps whisters, a log fire crackling animal sounds, city sounds, barroom conversations, the roar of a football crowd, a familiar voice, the ocean, early morning bird song, 
Are these sounds musical to your ears? How does music make you feel? Does it make you nostalgic? Where does it take you, you in your internal landscape? How can a snatch of music evoke a certain period in your life? What does silence sound like? Have you ever experienced silence? Do you like it? Are your thoughts too loud? Where is your mind located? Is music located inside your mind or outside of you? These are not just random questions. They are the kinds of questions rarely posed when young people start to learn how to approach an instrument. Yet I think they need to be asked because music is so much more than just going through the motions of producing a sound. People may be able to play well mechanically because they have learned to copy well, but in doing so they do not truly connect with the essence of music and express themselves. We have become so accustomed to recorded sound that it has become rather facile and formulaic. When you can literally access any piece of recorded music at the touch of a fingertip, something valuable gets lost or devalued in the process. Music has become ubiquitous. It's in shops, restaurants, bars, airports, waiting rooms, in fact anywhere that people gather. Sadly, in a way, music has become just another kind of social filler, like small talk or gossip. I get frustrated when I sit down to eat with a friend and we actually can't have a conversation because background music dominates the situation. People ask me what kind of music I listen to, and quite frankly, it's come down to the sustained resonance of Tibetan bowls. Why? Because it's so, so pure and still and utterly beautiful. It is the essence of music full circle, back to the source, the universal vibration. I guess what I'm saying is that as a music maker and music lover, I've become more discerning. I don't want to listen to music 24-7 just because it's available to me and I can. Sometimes I dip into the thing we call music and it still takes me profoundly by surprise, as if I were hearing it for the very first time. I wonder what your reactions are. So in class right now you would have to discuss this piece of writing. And when you discuss this piece of writing, you would be asked to consider uh, questions such as, for example, uh, I would ask you to consider uh, in terms of the technical, let's say the technique, and the emotion or the feeling that it gives you, like the bunuigi. So this would be shiliok, uh, shiliok, skill, technique, and this would be the kam or the bunugi, the emotions, the feelings that you get. So in terms of technique and emotion and feel, in terms of technique, sorry, what kind of techniques did you notice a lot of in there? Did you see anything technically in terms of shilio? One of the things that you might have noticed was this. Lots of lists. Lists and lists and descriptions. And it's very interesting because music is a guitar, a flute, an oboe, a piano, a sitar. And she's doing this list. Music makes us do this and this and this and this. Those lists, it's a technique and they're all throughout that writing. She uses lots of lists. Sometimes they have full stops or commas or and or new sentences, but there's lots, when I was reading it, lots and lots of lists. And this sounds like thinking. Because when we're thinking, we sometimes make lists and we make long ones and we make short ones. So, yeah, I like all kinds of drinks. I like um, iced tea and orange juice and pineapple juice and honey tea and sengang ta. I like lots of drinks. We make lists when we, when we do stuff. And that sounds natural when we talk. And that sounds like she's talking there with these lists. That's one of the techniques. So you can really hear her voice. I can hear her voice in this. And it doesn't sound like writing sometimes, it sounds like talking or speaking. That's brilliant. Another thing that she does in terms of technique 
is she uses this a lot. Annie Lennox uses these three dots quite a bit. It's called ellipsis. And these three dots, let's just have a, uh, let's find where they are. Because there, there are a few times. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Probably people are seeing them go, there, David, there, there's one. Music is a universal language, a human creation from a divine source, perhaps. I'm not an expert. I'm not a music expert. I'm a music lover, a discoverer, an explorer. There's another one. Saxophone, sitar, oboe, flute, they are all uniquely different. The ocean, early morning bird song. Are these sounds musical to your ears? In the end as well. Sometimes I dip into the thing we call music and it still takes me profoundly by surprise as if I were hearing it for the very first time. Here's the final one. This is the most obvious how she's using it. It's come down to this. Why? Because it's so, so pure and still. So this ellipsis, these three dots, you can see that she uses them many times. If, if you look at this sentence, what is she doing? What do the ellipsis, what do those three dots do? What is their purpose? What effect do they have? When you use this technique, what effect does it have? It's the same as the list. So I'm just going to go up here because there's a little bit of room to write. I'm sorry if it looks a bit messy, but make your own notes. And if you're confused, ask me. But it sounds like thinking. That pause sounds like thinking. So what we need to do is think about this kind of thing. When you're talking to someone, if you see professors, if you see journalists or news people, if they don't have a script, or even when you're talking to your mum and dad at the dinner table or, or your boyfriend or girlfriend, when there's no script and you don't know what to say, there are sometimes pauses while we think about it. That's what those dots are. It's a pause. It's this, mm, okay, and then we keep going. So you can use it to create this kind of little mm, stop, and that's quite nice to break up rhythm. The other thing it does is that it makes it sound like somebody is really talking to you. Because when you're writing... Because it's not live, it's not live, so you have time to edit it. When you're thinking, you don't type. You don't go, mm. but you can. And that's essentially what Annie Lennox is doing. She's trying to make it seem like it's live, that she's not going back and correcting things. She was thinking a bit, and so she did that. That's what these ellipses does. It puts this pause in there. It makes it sound like you're thinking. You're trying to think. There's this word that is really useful. And, uh, the word. That's right. The word is ellipsis. That's what that thing can do in your sentence. So if you've never used one before. You can see in this work. How Annie Lennox uses it. You can see that. On these times, sometimes she starts a new sentence. Sometimes it's just to say, well, maybe not really. Human creation from a divine source. Um, Amador. Credo. It's that thing that you put on the end of a sentence there. Okay. When she does it on this one, it's very interesting. It's the only time that she repeats the word. Because it's so... Well so pure she didn't say because it's so pure because it's so so pure so she goes back and repeats it so what i want to think about is uh, is writing so you could just give the answer or you could go back and repeat a couple of words this is the ellipsis she uses it a lot and it makes her work sound alive. It makes her work sound really good. And that's important because the topic is music. So the work has to sound like music. It has to be alive. 
if you were writing about music and it sounds like a robot, terrible. If you're writing about love and your work sounds boring, you, if you're writing about love, your work has to sound, feel like love. If you're writing about music, your work has to sound and feel like music. And that's what Annie Lennox gets right here. It sounds and feels like music. So this emotion, this feeling, it has this element of music to it. I think it's excellent writing. Just to have a look at a couple of things. So I hope that makes sense. This Maybe you don't like this writing. That's totally cool. Not everybody likes Tchaikovsky. Not everybody likes Ed Sheeran, Miles Davis. Okay. Everyone likes different things. Totally cool. If you look at this one, this paragraph, do you notice anything interesting about it? The interesting thing is it's all one sentence. There's one capital letter at the start here, and the full stop is here. So that's all one sentence. It's all one sentence, and between each idea uses a semicolon. And it does this because there's lots of, well, to, to this person, music means the ideas are hard, don't worry. But to, to Ian Skelly, music is this. To Mark Hiddell, it's this. To Brian Eno, it's this. To Howard Milner and myself, it's this. So lots of different people. But you don't want to spend too long writing about all this. You don't want to spend 500 words and 10 minutes reading it. You want it to be quick. Just let's get these people out the way. This is my academic references. These are all the other people's ideas. And because you want to just get through them, you don't want to take a long time on them. You want to have your own personal writing, your own personal thoughts. By only having one full stop, it makes it go quicker. Because that's not a stop. That's just a semicolon. So you're meant to go quick. You stop here and you take a breath. You need to learn the pauses and the speeds of these things. That means stop. That means just tank man, get off. Well, stop one second, go. This means il banzogoro in general. So that is all one sentence. If you want to get through a lot of information quickly just loads of stats and data references use the semicolon like this boom, and it goes quickly uh there are a couple of other things that i'd like to show you let's have a look at this what do you notice about these should be quite obvious Okay, what you should notice is that they are all questions. They're all questions. There's three paragraphs of questions. Now, maybe you don't have to write three paragraphs of questions, but perhaps you've never thought about, well, I can just write loads of questions. Can you ask me to money soil? Oh, I should do it. How many questions are there? One, two, three, four. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen questions in a row that Annie Lennox uses. And that's kind of interesting. Now, why is that a good technique? One of the interesting things about using so many questions is it makes it feel interactive. It makes it feel like she's talking to you, asking you a question. And that's really cool because, oh, you're talking to me. I have to wake up and think about these things. Great. If someone's just talking to you like this all the time, like I'm talking to you, sorry. If someone's just talking to you like this all the time, you feel like you don't have to answer. And if you don't have to answer, you can just go to sleep, wake up. But if someone's asking you questions, it makes your mind start moving. So what she does here is she asks 13 questions in a row okay uh, but here are also questions as well I should have said that's one that's another one that's another one so it brings in three paragraphs of 13 questions write a load of questions that's great it's also very hard 
Annie Lennox breaks her work into sections. So essentially, if we just take this as the introduction and the music, the, the writing starts here. One, two, three, four. There are four parts to her writing. But I can't see any big lines. So how is she separating her work into four parts? Her work is not just one boom, big piece of text. Her work is divided into four parts. Now, how is she doing that? Do you know the answer? Like this. Capital letters. Here. Capital letters. Ever since. When Satish Kumar. So that's. When this person, when, dung dung dung, when somebody, ever since, pause for, ah, it's three words. We have become, three words. You see that these are all capitals. That's not grammatically correct, but it makes me feel like we're coming into a new section. It's saying here is the last section. And here is another section. Pause for a moment. Tanka manyo. We're going to go a different way. And so these sections can provide different chapters in your writing. Instead of just doing a big thing, you can divide your writing into sections. And you can try to find different ways to say section one, section two, section three. She uses, Annie Lennox uses capital letters like that. See it? It's pretty cool. There are no rules. You could use bold. You could put that in control B. You could use that in size 20 and then that in size 10. You see that in books sometimes. The start of a chapter. Uh, da, 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 da. You could do control U underline. There's no rules. Do what looks good. It's got to look good. It's got to feel good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just show you one. Oh, I had a thing about here on ellipses, an unfinished thought and a pause in speech. This is the last thing. This is the structure that she used. So about music. She started with the question, what is the music? What is the music? What is music? Her reasons for writing was next. Somebody asked her. Somebody asked her to write about it. So that was the reason. And then the research, that was the big long sentence with all the semicolons. Someone said this and someone said this, someone said this. And then she said, what is music? Well, here's the scientific answer. It's something in our ears vibrating and signals to the brain. But music also needs breath and it's spiritus. That's the word. And this is my personal experience. And here... Is all guitars, oboe, xylophone, all these music words that I can think of. All words related to music, throw them in there. Emotions, genres, questions, questions all about music. Just loads of questions. And then the social impact, and then a conclusion. So imagine you were to do all this about love or BTS or Solio uh, What is Solio de? What is BTS? What is love? Well, I'm writing this because I don't know. Somebody said that love is this and love is this. Sometimes love is this thing in our hearts and it moves this. And love in English is this and sarang in uh, Korean. I've been in love, I've never been in love. Vocabulary, love, hearts, flutter, excitement, tragedy, sad, Romeo and Juliet. But what is love? What can we do? And why do we love? And should we love more? Can we love two people? Can we love three people? Can we love animals? Can we love books? What would it be like if we had no love? We need more love in our society. Therefore, that's love. You could take any concept and you could explore it like this. And you could say... Well, I don't like that one, so let's get rid of that one. And then let's put this one there. And let's get rid of that one. And let's do this one times two. Because I like that one. And we do this one short. And we do questions, just two paragraphs. 
Do you see? You can change that around. There are no rules. Do whatever you want. This week, I would like you to uh, once more. I would like you to do a what is piece of writing. What is mm? What is Myungsa or what is Dongsa? What is something? It can be anything you want. It can be music. It can be love. BTS. It can be what is online learning. What is COVID-19? Doesn't matter. I would like you to do a what is piece of writing and submit it to me. Try to have a look at Annie Lennox. Try to have a look at what she does. See if you can copy a bit of it. Steal a bit of it. Try to be Annie Lennox this week and slowly you'll start becoming your own person. Right? We're just learning from these. Please do that. Um, and there'll be a place on the e-class for you to submit your work. I'm going to ask you to put it in the discussion place because I want you to be able to read each other's work. I might comment on them. Uh, you don't have to talk about them if you don't want to. That's not part of the objective. But I want you to be able to read your classmates' work because group reading and critical analysis of writing is really important. And then you can inspire and challenge and motivate each other. So please do a what is piece of writing and put it in the discussion page and you'll be able to see other people's. You don't have to do tacos, but I want people to see your writing. And next week will be the first assignment. will be the first uh, assignment. So this semester we have four assignments. Assignment one, assignment two, which is midterm, kapeo. Assignment three, assignment four, which is final, do kapeo. So they're just four pieces of writing that you submit. We're going to start the first one next week. So this one is just kanyang about your nolyok, uh, about your participation and your efforts and trying to help you. It's just practicing. Next week will be your first piece of assignment writing. And for that piece of writing, you just have to give me something. There are no rules. Something maybe that demonstrates what you've learned during this course. It can be a what is again. It can be like Orwell. It can be a poem. It doesn't matter. It can be anything. You need to give me a piece of writing that says, this is what I've learned. This is what I've done. Check this out. That's your first assignment. And we're going to be getting into that next week. It will be due. Uh, I should check the dates. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking for the calendar on my computer. Uh, so this this what is is due on the night. We are I think. So this is due on the 9th. And the first assignment will be due 4월 12일. That will be the first writing assignment. No, no rules, no topic. Give me a piece. Submit a piece of writing that makes me go, well done, that's good. Okay, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions or if you need any help. Keep trying to write. Try to do 20 minutes a day. The best thing is don't do all your writing one day. Just do 20 minutes every day or something. That will help you. On Tuesday, I'll do another... Monday, Sangdam. That was very popular last week, so if you have any questions or you want to say hello, uh, I'll be doing a live one on Tuesdays. Uh, okay, that's it. So, hope to see you soon. Stay healthy and stay happy. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, and goodbye.